So, uh, the original title of this talk was supposed to be Corpus Collapsum, uh, Partition Tolerance Testing of uh, Galera and all that. But Stuart told me to make it less esoteric and, you know, uh, less uh, uh, spoofy and all that. So I, I changed it to doc, docm, uh, distributed system testing with netm and docker. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is the picture that I originally used for that corpus collapsum. It's basically supposed to indicate uh, the corpus callosum, which, uh, which is, which is uh, between left and right brain and absence of which causes the split brain, which is a medical condition and all that. So. Uh, so I was uh, trying to uh, create an equivalence between the split brain of uh, uh, in, uh, the medical condition and uh, what you see in distributed systems. Uh, okay, so some of the seed codes that I put here. Uh, network is reliable, a fallacy of the distributed system. A distributed system is one in which failure of a computer you didn't even know existed can render your own computer unusable. Uh, never attribute to malice, which is adequately explained by stupidity. That's Hanlon's razor. And never attribute to Byzantine failure, which can be explained by an ill node. Uh, basically, a Byzantine failure is one in which uh, uh, a node, uh, a corrupt node, or a, an, uh, what do you say, not a corrupt node, but a node with a bad intent, a bad node, can bring down a whole cluster. And that is one of the requirements of distributed systems. Something that uh, is not satisfied by many and something uh, to satisfy which requires a great deal of complexity, actually. Anyway, but th this talk is not about the Byzantine uh, complexity, so. Uh, okay, so uh, this is about uh, distributed systems. Galera. Okay. Uh, distributed systems testing with uh, gal of uh, Galera with uh, NetM and Docker. So basically, Galera, I've, I've explained it later on, but it's basically a synchronous replication plugin for MySQL. It provides uh, synchronous replication around multiple nodes, uh, and uh, it uses something called eventual virtual synchrony over here. Uh, the database is basically uh, extra deep, per con extra DB cluster, which has uh, something called right set replication API, which the plugin, Galera plugin implements. And uh, then there is uh, traffic control, uh, some of you may be uh, familiar with this uh, or may have played with this. It's a command called TC, which provides a lot of uh, uh, QDISCs and stuff for controlling the traffic. And NetM is one of the QDISCs, which, pro which derived from NistNet and which allows you to add packet loss and stuff like that, packet loss and delay and corruption and whatnot. Okay, and the other actors are like Docker itself. Uh, I've used Docker, but uh, you can, you know, in future anything else can be used, like Rocket or LX or who knows, anything else. Uh, and for load generation, I'm using Sysbench, but uh, I'm, I, I've also used random query generator. I remember there was a talk earlier today on random data, I believe. Uh, so I think uh, random query generator is something like that. It, it's, it's something called a first tester for MySQL, so it generates a lot of uh, uh, queries based on a predetermined uh, uh, grammar and uh, such. And for the network, I'm using a DNS mask container. DNS mask is nothing but uh, a DHCP and a DNS server, and uh, I'm using it for DNS purposes. Actually, DNS is not the purpose, but it's one of the ends, actually, uh, what, uh, because it's required uh, for uh, the cluster usage. Because Docker, as you know, still, uh, it, has a, it has very simplified networking, but it's, it's not comprehensive, uh, in that the linking is uh, not that comprehensive enough for a, for a full-blown cluster. It's, it's good for like something like Redis client and Redis server, but not for a synchronous replication cluster. So I had to write a, my own uh, DNS mask container for this. And I use uh, NS Enter uh, for manipulating the network namespace of the containers here. Uh, because uh, it's, uh, otherwise probably I can use docker exec, now that docker exec is available for uh, injection into the containers, but uh, NS Enter is what I'm using uh, currently, and it works perfectly fine. You can manipulate any of the namespaces like PID, mount, network, user, and all of those. I'm manipulating the uh, network namespace to attach QDisk to the network interface of the container, not to the virtual network, uh, virtual uh, network interface, which is like VETH, 
not that, but the one inside the container, which is usually ETH0. And then there is uh, Jenkins, of course, because I needed this to be, you know, uh, part of our QA testing, because there are a lot of QA tests based on this, on top of this, because uh, the problem with the distributed systems testing is, uh, in many cases, it's assumed that there's no packet loss. As I said, in one of those seed codes, there's no packet loss or there is no delay and stuff like that. Earlier, that's how the QA test for uh, uh, PX is run. Now, now uh, I've added this so that you know I can create uh, so, you know the a virtual LAN or virtual WAN and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so this is I just wanted to illustrate that distributed system testing is like a, a Kobayashi Maru. Uh, if some of you are fam familiar with Star Trek, it it means an unwinnable situation. So basically, what it means is uh, suppose you you know you do some tests and you spot some bug, you fix it. Again, you run the test, you'll find some more. You know, distributed systems uh, are like that. But, but that's, f that's part of the fun, right? Anyway, so why, well, why was this testing done? Uh, so briefly, to explain briefly, this is uh, test the P in the CAP. CAP, as you know, was proposed by uh, Eric Brewster in a conference somewhere in the 90s uh, in his keynote. And uh, from there on, uh, it caught up. And it has become, you know, one of the standards by with, with which you could uh, judge the distributed systems. Anyway, so that was and van scalability is something I needed to test. Yeah, real reason, fun. That's my reason, anyway. Uh, and uh, one more thing is I wanted to test tolerance to latency variance because the problem with the latency is it's, it doesn't. Uh, if it's fine that you have a high latency or low latency, but the variance, right? The variance around the standard deviation is what creates uh, instability in a distributed system. It should not. The variance, uh, uh, by variance I mean the, uh, what do you say, the square of the standard deviation of the mean of latency. So anyway, uh, so for uh, Perconex DB cluster, you, you don't need, unlike other distributed systems, something like HCD, uh, as uh, the core OS folks have spoken about, where you have something like a leader and a quorum, or a Cassandra, where again you can establish a quorum. Uh, what you need in a cluster, in a synchronous replication cluster, wherein you have uh, identical requirements for writes and reads, that is, you read anywhere or write anywhere, you need a consensus and not a quorum. So network is very, very important, and so is latency. So to simulate real-world networks and for uh, synchronous replication, these two things were the ones that were added, uh, the delay and partition, and there are many tests based around this. And this is basically how I illustrate Galera. It's, and uh, it's basically, uh, to, to put it simply, it uh, uses what you call as the eventual virtual synchrony, uh, as opposed to something called one copy equivalence in distributed systems. One copy equivalence is where you have like five, dis five nodes, but uh, uh, the five nodes behave as if, you are, as if there is one node in terms of uh, replication. But that is something that is very hard to guarantee. And uh, I think Jim Gray has written a wonderful paper on that, and uh, there is... Uh, and I think I, uh, I forgot the name of the paper, but it's then the further reading. So anyway, so Galera, uh, to put it simply, and for this uh, short period, I would say it's a synchronous replication plugin for MySQL. But there's a whole lot of documentation you can. And there's a, there are a lot of papers around uh, eventual virtual synchrony that uh, you can find useful. And that I've linked also in the further reading. Anyway, this is just how, the, how it looks. and. Uh, Okay, but basically this operates around something called optimistic concurrency control. Uh, you, you may also know it as, uh, what do you call it, lock elision or transactional memory in uh, locking uh, parlance. So what happens here is that one, one node has a transaction and it commits and it sends to remote nodes. It does not wait for uh, uh, an acknowledgement from the other node. It just commits. And what happens on the other node if there is a conflict? And this is what we refer to as a certification conflict. In this case, it aborts its local transaction and it applies the remote one. So this is done to ensure that there is a very high throughput. So round trips are done only when the membership changes. That is, the network uh, membership changes, which is not that often, and whenever a node dies or leaves. That's what I mean by membership change. And this is basically a finite state machine which is implemented and all the nodes are supposed to be in sync state. But they, all, they often go to like donor where you donate your, you transfer your state to a new node and stuff like that. Anyway, so this, the, the, the problem with this kind of a cluster is one node can bring the whole node down uh, because of uh, certain issues. 
Well, as I mentioned, Byzantine complexity is where a node intentionally tries to bring the cluster down with uh, corrupt packets or uh, you know latency or something like that. But in this case, a node, a faulty node with a you know ne bad network interface or a bad uh, disk, can uh, slow down the writes or uh, yeah, slow down and introduce artificial latency. Anyway, so some of these te I have listed some of the tests here. Uh, chaos testing is what you, what Netflix introduced as Chaos Monkey, wherein you know you have a distributed system and you randomly uh, have uh, you remove the nodes and you know you, you introduce rapid membership changes in the cluster. Uh, I actually call it uh, Chaos Sapiens because it's not a monkey but an intelligent uh, uh, being which is introducing chaos into the cluster. Uh, and uh, that test is very, very interesting in that uh, the nodes are removed and, it, and the length of time the node is away from the cluster and they are removed non-gracefully as in like as, as if you are pulling out the cable and the length of the time they are away from the cluster de determines the state transfer that they require, whether they require a full state transfer from another node or an incremental one. And so there are a lot of race conditions and uh, things around that. And there is some flow control testing with sysbench because uh, there in distributed uh, systems you have something called uh, a back pressure. A back pressure is where you are sending packet one one node is sending to another node and it another node says you know I cannot take it just hold on and stuff like that. So there are two kinds of back pressure: synchronous and asynchronous back pressure. And in this case, uh, uh, the back pressure depends on how much of the queue is filled up. It's it's a whole another topic. So anyway. Earlier, uh, when we were testing with Sysbench, we did not have something, we, we, there was no uh, delay, but uh, in this case, I added delay, and uh, Galera has something called segments to introduce the concept of vans and lands, so you can have like, uh, so it, it can distinguish between a wide area network node, so, so for a simulation of data centers, so with this, I am doing that, and network loss, that, that was uh, an, one of the other tests, wherein uh, uh, I dropped the random packets, and uh, this one, the network loss test was the main source for which I wrote all of this. Uh, so, because that was one of those things which was introducing, uh, which was making. Oh boy! Hold on. <sighs> I thought I. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, network loss testing uh, was the one which introduced it because it was making, uh, because a cluster has something called a primary component. That is the component which is, act, which is you know, uh, the same part of it, as in like, which, because when, when there is a network partition and uh, the, the, part, the nodes which have a quorum form something called a primary component, they are the only ones who can take reads and writes. There are other nodes who can take what you call as a dirty read, but you, they cannot take writes, obviously. So uh, network loss testing was for that. And uh, anyway, for the future, I plan on introducing uh, more fun tests. Uh, you know, as I said, it's like a Kobayashi Maru. You know, there's always uh, something uh, you can do and fix. Oh, yeah, I get that also. Okay. Yeah, that's a random fortune, which I add for every 10 minutes so that, you know, I keep track of time. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is something I added. There's no higher menace than distributed system testing. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is roughly what the chaos testing is. Uh, uh, nodes are killed at random, and less than half of the nodes are chosen because uh, obviously I want to keep the quorum, and uh, I'm using Docker inspect for inspecting uh, the PID, and I'm using SickKill because uh, I'm using SickKill directly because you cannot proxy SickKill from Docker to ins the process inside it, which is MySQL D. You cannot proxy SQL, but you can proxy other signals in Docker. Obviously, you cannot proxy SQL, right? Anyway, so there is a configurable sleep and retry uh, logic around it. Actually, I tried to use Docker restart, but with the with the time of zero to simulate a SQL, but that doesn't work. I think it's a bug, or maybe not, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, that's that that uh, that is about it. And this is about network loss where uh, I choose a, a subset of nodes and uh, I detach or keep the queue disk. And uh, I have something called a reconciliation period uh, wherein I sleep. Uh, there is a sleep uh, in between and after that I run sanity checks. Uh, there are two primary objectives depending on whether I, or whether I detach or keep the uh, network loss queue disk in the end. 
It's to check whether the primary component itself is formed, uh, that is, or uh, based on the time to recover the cluster takes. Okay, just to mention briefly, what happens if there is a node which has a packet loss here is that uh, the nodes are evicted through something called Stonith. That is, uh, nodes, uh, they themselves talk among themselves and they say that this node is bad. And when all of them agree, uh, that node is kicked out. You know, that's simple. Uh, the, these nodes maintain a history of all the bad nodes. And, uh, and when, for that node to join back to cluster, it has to be restarted. Okay, quickly to the containers. Okay, why not virtualize? Because I didn't, I needed performance and there was no need. You know, that's Occam's razor. I just needed uh, isolation among the uh, nodes and uh, namespaces provided. So why, why should I virtualize? And that's uh, the simplicity. And uh, yeah, network is very simplified here. I didn't have for each Galera node requires three ports. And uh, suppose, uh, imagine we like 20, 20 nodes, you know, that, that's a big headache. So I didn't want to do that. Portability, reproducibility, and all that stuff. Because uh, this is also part of a QA testing and not just something that I run on my laptop. It runs in our Jenkins uh, every day or so, or whenever I want. There are multiple tests, actually, as I said. Uh, QMU vis-a-vis -vis Docker. Uh, mm, OK, QMU still has some interesting stuff. So there's something you can do, like uh, simulate NUMA nodes. I think uh, that is something very, very, uh, uh, you know, that's very interesting. You can create, like, a 16 socket, uh, I don't know, two socket, four core, and all that with QMU. It uses libnuma, I think, for that. That is something which is very, very interesting uh, with QMU that I used to do. Anyway, uh, so all that. Container network, how much time I have? Uh, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes I have. Okay. Okay, that's good, I think. Hmm. What happened now? This, okay. Okay, so yeah, the Docker I use because for the uh, reasons of performance again here, I didn't want to virtualize and all that. And it also provided me the abstraction of channels, you know, uh, by, by channels I mean uh, horse channels. Car whore, the professor who introduced uh, the concept of uh, uh, communication among uh, what, what you see in Go language and all that, the, those channels, the abstraction of that I could make, uh, I could create in this. Anyway, so for the container networking, linking did not help me because linking initially, uh, what linking is in Docker when you use minus dash dash link. Oh God, what happened now? This one went off. What, is, what happened to this? Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I had to use a DNS mask container for that. And uh, basically what I did here is that uh, I'm not using DHCPD of uh, DNS mask because the Docker does not uh, tell you to change the DHCP CD that it comes built in with, which is, which is a pain in a way because uh, currently every container that you start uh, gets a sequentially uh, you know, in incremented uh, IP address. But uh, if you want your own IP addresses, it's, it's a bit of a pain. Anyway, so this DNS mask container has something called a volume file, which is passed to it through a Docker volume. And every new container, uh, PXE container that comes up, uh, writes its IP address to that file. And the, the DNS mask container has a, a SIG hub that it does to itself every second. So that, that's like a hack. But uh, as I mentioned in my uh, talk yesterday, I'm also evaluating others like VU and uh, OVS and stuff like that. But this works for my testing for so far. But again, DNS mask also has uh, uh, some issues. Uh, as I said, the DHCP CD1 is one of them. And Docker has some issues wherein, like, if you restart a container, it does not retain its IP address. Actually, they fixed it, but again, that introduced some bugs, so they reverted it back and all that. So I have to do some uh, clumsy stuff there. Uh, so what is the noise that I introduced is, initially, I was attaching the QDIS to the bridge itself. As you see, the Docker, when uh, there are multiple nodes, it uses a Linux bridge. Uh, with multiple uh, taps, but then I realized that uh, this, when I added it to these uh, virtual interfaces, it was doing it for egress only, not for in ingress packets. That's outgoing, not ingoing, uh, incoming packets. And that required something like intermediate functional block device 
NetM or something. Anyway, so what I realized was I, I can use NS Enter and attach it to the ETH0 of the container itself, and that simplified a lot of things. Anyway, with NetM, I'm uh, doing all of this stuff like packet loss, delay, corruption, uh, duplication, reordering, and whatnot. Uh, it allows for some very complex uh, loss models, actually. Uh, huh. One more thing I would like to mention here is that uh, Galera supports both TCP and UDP. And when I used uh, something like duplication and reordering with TCP, obviously I did not see any issues because TCP handles some of these things by itself. The application did not. So, but uh, the, the future is where I am going to try with UDP and uh, and multicast and all that. So, with duplication and reordering and see and see how the application itself handles it because the application also has some logic around uh, some of these, at least around reordering. Uh, other noises are like libbit my data, which uh, I use uh, the stewards uh, libbit my data for async. But I, you know, I, what I plan to use is that not only to remove async, but to introduce uh, artificially high, uh, you know, uh, slow async. You know, I want to try that as well. You know, to 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 simulate like a really old hard disk, you know, or, or like a tape, uh, something like that. Because currently with this, you just remove the entire thing with no async, and uh, I can test the network there. I can stress the network in that case. I can remove the storage itself and and to see how it correlates with network and all that. And to do this, uh, I needed to pass this library into the container. And uh, I used the LD preload with the, the Docker environment variable. I passed it. The Docker image itself had uh, the library installed uh, beforehand. And uh, I used the LD preload as the environment variable. In Docker, you can use dash E for that. Anyway, the fix, I think I've already mentioned it. It, it uses uh, all these nodes, use a, uh, use a counter, and uh, once uh, the counter is, uh, th the threshold is reached, it uses a stone it, stone the other node in the head, which is very popular. Uh, this is okay. Uh, core dumps uh, is another issue that I had with Docker because because the the concept of isolation in uh, containers in general is not that uh, you know bulletproof. Even when there are namespaces, not all devices are passed, uh, and especially something like sysctl, if you do inside a privileged container, it can change it for the host as well. So especially if you if you change the uh, codom pattern sysctl. So this required some uh, some uh, weird stuff to be done, uh, and. Uh, Particularly because MySQL D runs as a, a set UID uh, because it drops its privileges later on, so it's a set UID thing, and uh, so for that, and there were U limit issues, so I had to pass a common Docker volume to get uh, uh, core dumps, and uh, yeah, and some some hacking around all all of these things because it and but for the time being that's how i have to do it because other, otherwise there is no way uh, you you can get core dumps which is a sad thing uh, otherwise i have to use vms again uh, this is about van segments in galera and uh, uh, how uh, okay uh, so it simulates data center and uh, I, I, like something like joiner starvation when a new node joins, uh, how long it will be starved for waiting for a state transfer from other nodes and stuff like that. Anyway, this is a, there's, a, there's a lot of proof of concept code and uh, container uh, a lot of uh, container uh, Docker files, fig files. Also, I also have fig files in this so that you can um, uh, orchestrate and bring up a, bring up uh, the cluster easily. You, you just have to do fig scale, bootstrap equals one, and members equals, I don't know, 10. It will bring up 11 node cluster easily, you know. Uh, I gave a talk on this yesterday, so you can probably look at its recording tomorrow or uh, do a time travel. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this is the Jenkins, but there are more tests that I've not added uh, in the link there. You can contact me for that, of course. Uh, to do is more orchestration. Yeah, some signal proxying, not for sick kill, but for others, actually. Uh, I use 6 egg to generate core dumps, and uh, so I have to proxy it and all that. Currently, I'm doing p kill and uh, my sequel D. <sighs> future work, Ooh, what is future work? Okay, I want to do more fault injection uh, with uh, memory poisoning, you know, like MADV uh, poison, MADY poison, that's 
and uh, I want to simulate Eno space with something like dev full uh, um, file slash dev slash full and all of that. Uh, Numa I want to do, but I don't think I can do it with containers. Probably I'll need QMU or something. Uh, let's see. Or uh, probably I can add it to Docker. Hmm. Okay. Or not. Anyway, uh, more network stuff like reordering, rate limiting, and a lot of stuff. You know, it's fun when you can do all of this with the NetM and with these uh, containers. Anyway, so this is all the further reading. These are some some of some really good lit literature in here. Like, uh, don't settle for eventual consistencies about eventual consistency. Uh, then, uh, Byzantine fault uh, reaching agreement in presence of faults is a very good paper. Network is reliable is a good one. Uh, the last one is the paper on extended virtual synchrony, the protocol for uh, virtual uh, synchronous replication, which, uh, by the way, uh, what is that? Corosync also has it. Corosync, which is very popular and which is behind MySQL group replication in uh, MySQL 5.7, has it. Uh, that also is this extended virtual synchrony, actually. Okay, this is about me. Uh, the slides will be there, but again, uh, the location of the slides, if I put it on the slide, you know, uh, it doesn't ma it doesn't work, right? So I think Stuart will probably put somewhere, and I'll also tweet about it. That's it. These are the image credits. Thank you. Uh, Do you have any questions? Yeah, you can ask me now, or you can ask me later. I'm also available on IRC and a lot of other places. I prefer IRC though, but not for the next five days. <laughs> Because I don't have it on this. Cool. If you have any questions on Docker, Galera, uh, NetM, and something, and databases, and, Gal and containers, and namespaces, you can ask me. Okay? Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.